Hey everyone and welcome back to the DaVinci Resolve editing tutorial series here on Ugly McGregor. Here in episode 2 we are going to have a look at the user interface and some of the core functions of the edit page. This is of course where you will be compiling all of your media into a nicely trimmed edit. If you haven't watched the first episode on importing and organising your media in the media page, you can find that in the link in the description below or on the card on the screen. So with no further introduction, this is the edit page. Like the media page, this too is broken up into separate panels, all of which have their own functions. This here is the default layout, so let's have a tour. We have the media pool here. Now this is gonna be where all of our imported media is kept. All of the bins you've created, smart bins, any unorganized uh, media, it's gonna be here. And if you want to import anything else, you will need to go back to the media page or alternatively, you could drag a media clip from a folder or your desktop into the media pool here. However, if you drag in, you know, 20 clips, it's gonna to start to get a little bit messy again. So it might be best to go back to the media page and import it and start placing it into its designated bins. Here we have our source monitor. This is where we will preview our clips before bringing them into the timeline. It basically has all of the same features as the viewer from the media page. Here we have the timeline monitor. It of course shows the current frame from the timeline where the playhead is currently positioned. If you need a safe area guide for this, you can go up to view safe area and select your properties from here. Both of these displays, when selected, can be enlarged in cinema mode with Control F or Command F. And here we have the timeline, which of course, I'm sure you know is where you will be building your edit. And you know what, if you've used any basic NLE, this is, this is gonna look a little familiar. I mean, if we open up Premiere CC 2017 here, it's not really a huge leap regarding the layout. You know, for me, when I move to a new software, as soon as the interface is dramatically different and I open it up and it looks like a control interface from Star Wars, already feel a little bit out of my depth. However, this isn't in deep water. It's familiar for better words, although, Again, with the greatness that Resolve provides, there are a lot of hidden panels. So we have an effects panel here. Here you will find all of your video effects, titles, transitions, and you can favorite an effect by pressing the star button or by right clicking and selecting add to favorites. And when you do this, you can come up to the ellipsis and click show favorites. Now you don't have to scroll through the full list of effects to find these favorited ones. That's really cool. Uh, I, I should say really, if you ever see an ellipsis, just click it because it usually offers a lot more options than what is currently presented on screen. So we have the edit index. This will tell us which clips are in the timeline and where. Incredibly useful if you have a timeline filled with clips and you're looking for a specific one, perhaps to grab a still frame and you just can't find it on the timeline. The edit index will help you find that in that regard. If you click a clip, it will actually also take you to the start of it on the timeline. The ellipsis again will open up more doors. It will allow you to customize the edit index for your specific needs. Need to find an audio track only? Select show audio. Now, when I try to move this, it doesn't extend all the way. And as you can see by the scroll bar at the bottom, there's a lot more information there available to us. So what you can do is right click and choose what elements you want active or what elements you want to remove. If you say you want the effects library and the edit index up for some reason, just click the effects panel and you'll have these two panels activated instead of the media pool. On the top right now, we have the metadata panel. This is the same as what can be found on the media page. If you need to add any extra metadata in the shots in the timeline, you can do so by opening the panel. The inspector will allow you to change the composite mode, scale the clips in size, change the frame interpolation. You can find that in here. The same with basic audio changes, volume, pan, you can find it here on the right tab. Although you can quickly scale a clip by simply pressing this pop-up transform button here on the timeline monitor. An overlay will appear and you can scale in, scale out, or switch it to crop mode and so on. And then finally we have the audio meters, which are activated by clicking the musical note icon. 
You know, I think Black Magic have just missed the mark with this one because I think it would be amazing if every time you click the musical note icon, something happened. It played a famous musical note. Uh, I'm just going to edit this in here for fun. So <laughs> we can change this to a clip or track mixer, but that's something that a future episode will be designated to. We will do a full on episode with audio in Resolve. Now, all of these panels are highly customizable between hiding them, increasing the width, expanding a certain panel. There's a lot of flexibility to find and create an edit interface in which you feel comfortable with. If you've customized the layout so much and you can no longer find your way home, things are getting dark, simply go to the top menu, select workspace, layout, reset UI layout. So let's have a look at creating a timeline. Before we create one, let's go down to the Gears of War cog and we're gonna go to general options and select use timeline bin. If you're working on something that has a lot of scenes, it's going to be beneficial to use different timelines for different scenes. Now what will happen is when we create a timeline, create seven timelines, they will all be placed into the same timeline bin, which is going to be a lot easier to find instead of having different timelines scattered around the entire media pool. You don't have to do this, but it's just an extra layer of organization, which is going to go a long way. So we can make a timeline in several different ways. The simplest and quickest, I guess you could say, would just be to drag a clip onto the timeline panel and it will automatically create a timeline. The problem is if we need to adjust some of the, the foundation properties in any way, it's just an extra leg work to go and get that changed. So instead, let's press Ctrl N and this pop-up will appear. We can also get here as well by going to File, New Timeline. Now we can create a timeline tailored to our specific needs. So I know for this magical project, we're gonna have two lines of dialogue, some sound effects, score, um, and let's just say some added foley or an, uh, an added track for safety. So let's set the timeline with five audio tracks and three video tracks. I'll be working in stereo and I'm gonna name this timeline scene one magic short film thing. So now we can choose if we want an empty timeline or if we unselect that, it will populate the entire timeline with everything in our media pool. Or if we have already created in and out points for our media, it will create the timeline with those inserts instead. If we go back to the timeline bin, we can now see our newly created bin here. And if we right click it, there'll be some advanced options which we will go into in our delivery episode. So let's have a look at bringing some clips into the timeline. When I first, uh, got into filmmaking and editing I guess I just used to drag all of my clips into the timeline and, and I would try and find where I wanted my clip to start I would cut the excess off it with the blade tool and some trim tools and when I look back to all the projects I must have lost hundreds of hours of my life by doing it that way a more efficient way of bringing your clips into the timeline is to bring them into the source monitor first or source viewer you call it either or it doesn't matter so to do this very simply double click a media file it will open up in the source monitor. It still hasn't been implemented into the timeline at this point. Here we're gonna find the moment that we want this clip to be brought into the timeline. Now you can either scrub through using the scrub button, drag the playhead, use your mouse to press any of the play buttons underneath, or you can use your keyboard, space to play and stop, or more advanced, we can press L to play, double L to fast forward, K to stop, J to play in reverse, and double J to rewind faster. Or you can hold down K and then press L or J to play the clip forward or in reverse at half speed, which can be pretty useful for finding that exact point you want when you're watching a clip actually play out. Alternatively, you can just use left and right on the keyboard to nudge frame by frame. So, okay, looking at this, I want the clip to start here and end round about by here. I know from my shot list, I have an insert that plays over the top of this too. So you don't have to get it exactly how you want. It's not gonna matter if you're a few seconds out, but having a 10 second clip brought into the timeline, is gonna be a lot more manageable than say having a 130 clip. So to bring the clip in at this specific length, we need to set in and out markers. You do this by going to your start point and clicking this button or I on the keyboard and then finding the end point and obviously clicking the button next to that or O on the keyboard. You can now see that we have this highlighted gray bar, which signifies the duration the clip will be when brought onto the timeline. Now you can simply drag this from the source monitor or press F9 and it will be added to the active track. You can also drag the clip from the media pool over to the timeline viewer and it gives you a list of different edit options in which that you can apply to the clip that you are dragging in. For example, if I just add a few more clips to our timeline and if I wanted this to be inserted, 
I'll drag it to insert and it will break the clip in the timeline and it will get inserted in between wherever the playhead was. Or if I wanted to replace the clip in the timeline with the duration of the clip that I'm dragging in, I'll drag it over to replace. And as you can see, the length of the two clips in the timeline is a lot shorter because it's replaced the clip whereas before it was placed where the playhead is positioned and no footage from the existing clip in the timeline was deleted. Honestly, I don't really use it that much despite it being useful. So finally, let's bring our attention to the tracks. We have a few tracks set up from where we created our timeline, but we're going to go ahead and delete these. Right click and select delete tracks. Okay, so we have one video track and one audio track. If you need to add more, you can right click and select add track or if you select add tracks plural uh, this pop-up menu appears where you can be more specific with the qualities of the tracks that needed to be added now i've intentionally left the tracks here looking bland i like to see the frames of the entire video track and for them to be a little taller in height we can do this by going over here and clicking the timeline view option button and by selecting this you are presented with several options for your timeline display this shows the first and last frame. This shows all of the frames, which I prefer. I'm also going to select show audio waveform and I'm going to increase the height. There we go, that looks much better. And if you want to zoom in, it's control equals and control minus, or you can press the zoom in and zoom out buttons here. Personally, I prefer alt and scroll using the mouse. It's a lot quicker. So now we've got our tracks expanded. Let's go and have a look at some of the functions of the track itself. The celluloid frame here and the speaker icon will both enable or disable that track. The lock icon will of course lock those tracks from any edits and any changes. We can rename our tracks by clicking over the video or audio title. And you may notice that between video track one and video track two is that this V1 box has an orange square around it. That essentially tells me that this is the destination track for anything that comes in from the source monitor. So if I activate track two and I bring a clip in from the source monitor and I make my in and out points and I press F9, it will appear on the track above instead of video track one. However, look at what has happened here. The clip on track one has separated and given us a space for the duration of the clip on track two. What if I didn't want that? What if I just wanted the clip on track two to be an insert? Well, that is because of the auto selection button here, which brings me in to the basics of editing in episode three. So this is the edit page. I hope you have an understanding of the layout. I apologize this wasn't necessarily an episode filled with bangs and explosions, but sometimes you just need to get the boring bits out of the way before we go ahead with learning the edit functions. Otherwise, I'd be receiving comments all day long. McGregor, you bugger. My insert clip keeps landing on track two instead of one. What do I do? Well, that's what this episode's for. So in the next episode, we will run through the toolbar of the edit functions, that auto selection feature there, and all of that good stuff. Now, of course, the competition from episode one. I had hundreds of, I say hundreds, I had probably just over a hundred comments. Uh, and you know, I had so many I actually had a hard time to try and figure out the best way to do this competition. I was going to give everyone a number, then just find a number generator. But it turns out there's actually a YouTube comment random generator, which is it's nuts. So, so without further ado, let's pick out a winner. I'm quite excited. I'm going to try and find a drum roll. Edited in. Done. Okay, Ryan Mormon, you are our winner. And through the power of editing, I have just checked my subscriber emails and I can see that you have been subscribed uh, since 2014, which cool, kudos, one of the old school ones, I guess. So please reply uh, with a message on YouTube or email me with your details and I will pass them along to Blackmagic and get you a copy of DaVinci Resolve Studio 12.5. Okay guys, remember to like, subscribe if you haven't. Who knows, there might be another competition on the final episode.